What I'm going to tell you today is kind of off the wall, and I may be totally wrong, but I believe that Joe Biden on August the 24th of uh, this year postponed the the worst of the stock market crash of 2022. And, I, and I'm saying that because that was the day he it proposed or enacted or put before Congress that he wanted to uh, forgive the student loans and forgive up to $500 billion, it looks like at this point. And as a result of that, I think he diverted us from having a tremendous crash because what it would have done, the default rate was coming in so hard by student loans because they have no collateral against it and it was about to collapse and it would have brought this down. This is a credit default instrument the United States to go into default themselves. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Between now and October the 31st, I'll be giving away $1,000 for you to buy stock. Moomoo is adding to my contribution with 15 stocks worth up to $2,000 each. Find the links in the description. Before we get into the student loans, I think it's important to understand what a credit default instrument is. Think of it like a mutual fund. A mutual fund is a collection of stocks to give you exposure to growth in, in the various companies, but to give you diversification to diminish your risk. So the same thing happened in the bond market. This was kind of generated back in the early 2000s as bondholders said, we don't want to take on all the risk of high risk investments such as credit card debt and, and uh, student loan debt and things like that. Why can't you package them in a mutual fund type instrument called a credit default instrument and, and put them together? So in these these structures, you have mortgages, which represent about 18 trillion of our consumer $23 trillion debt. You have student loans that represent 1.8 trillion, credit card debt representing 1.1 trillion, auto loans 1.5 trillion. And then probably not in these, but there is 400 or $45 billion worth of payday loans. That, then also in this package, you're going to have business debt, which amounts to about $20 trillion. So consumer debt is $23 trillion. Business debt is $20 trillion. And business debt is made up of, of big business debt as well, as well as small business debt. Small business debt is going to have a much higher default rate, where as the, a loan to uh, Apple isn't going to have a high default rate. So you put all these loans in a package and then you have diversification. Now the package is good as long as you don't have an extraordinary amount of defaults. And that's what happened in 205 or 207, 8, and 9 with the crazy mortgages that were put out. The mortgages represented about, <clears throat> as I say, about 75% of consumer debt. And as they went bad... Uh, the, 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 the whole package fell apart. We use this, this little tower of wooden blocks because if you think about it, if, if one mortgage package goes bad, uh, it can go out and it doesn't jeopardize the whole package. So what, what I believe happened was the people showed up at the White House and said, we're having a tremendous default rate on uh, student loans. And we need to get that out of the package so that the whole, the whole package maintains its stability. So th they, they basically said uh, the government will release those student loans and that will make the mortgage package or the, the, the credit default package more stable. And that's what Joe did. He, he, he did it in a roundabout way. Now, it's not done yet. It's, it's got to be either approved by uh, the government or the courts, and, and it looks like he ha does have the power to 
definitely uh, relieve $10,000. And here is a breakdown of what student loans look like. The average student loan is $37,000. 32% of it, a third of them have under $10,000. So it's a pretty much a sure thing that Joe has the power to relieve um, 32% of the students or their parents or their grandparents that have loans. He can, he can take care of that. He, what's up, and then it's also believed he can forgive the Pell Grants up to $20,000. So that's, that represents 53%. So right there, you've got 85% of the student loans out there that amount to $1.8 trillion uh, re relieved, okay? The, the people who may end up on the hook, which is kind of uh, crazy here, is the 7% who have over $100,000 in student loans. And, and oddly enough, most of that is owned by 50 to 61-year-olds. So that's where parents stepped up, probably with collateral, to put them in a position that now they may be the only ones left with any student debt debt. So that basically what I believe is Joe stopped this tower from falling back in August. Now, is, is it still in jeopardy? Well, let's look what's happening. We, we now, just today, we learned that there was a spike in unemployment. Why did that happen? Well, we know that Amazon laid off 100,000 people. We know that uh, FedEx is laying people off. We, we know that, that a lot of people's jobs are in jeopardy now. We know the real estate industry is collapsing. Uh, we know that many contractors who used to be building houses are going to show up at the unemployment lines now. So the, 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 there's, there's a jeopardy that this tower could come down as now maybe not only student loans, but the next thing that will probably show up will be credit card loans. Credit card loans will start going into default. Again, taking another peg out of this tower and putting it in jeopardy. Shortly after that, it, it's funny. Then, at, it's not funny. Unemployment will put mortgage loans in jeopardy. And that represents $18 trillion. Now, they aren't all going to come down, but it's going to put it in jeopardy. So, with that in mind, I believe that we, we need to be aware as we see the unemployment numbers go up, as we see credit card uh, debt defaulting, um, and as we see auto loans. But I, I read something just recently that people will default on their mortgage before they default on their car. <laughs> I, I guess they figure I can sleep in my car and it's a lot, lot less expensive to heat it than the house. And uh, there aren't, as, well, if, if I don't drive it a lot, there aren't as many repairs and maintenance and the gas is controllable. So that, that's what I think we are facing. Now, that then starts the domino effect. And, and I, I, I got out my my little box of dominoes to show you what happens then. What happens then is as these this credit instrument defaults, as more and more people uh, default on their mortgages, uh, default on um, their student loans, default on their credit cards, eventually this thing comes down. Okay? And who does that hurt? Because who is buying these? I mean, you and I aren't buying these credit default instruments. They're being bought by pension funds. And why is that? A pension fund basically takes money out of someone's check to put into the pension fund and then pays it out to its retirees. Well, through efficiency and, and uh, you're, you're having less pay e payees as opposed or less payers than payees. You have less employees paying a growing number of retirees. 
and thus thus they are then put in a pinch of how do we how do we keep the the eight percent that we need to pay our our retirees well they buy these instruments again if these instruments fail then pension plans fail what happens when pension plans plans fail banks fail insurance companies fail we have a reenactment of the the 2008 and and again if you have not seen the movie and read the book you need to familiarize yourself with the big short i would encourage you this weekend to watch it it's on amazon prime and then after you watch that watch too big to fail because that's again going to explain how not only are the banks in this that's why I'm shorting banks, but also insurance company. AGI almost went bankrupt. It had to be bailed out by the federal government. And what does that mean, bailed out? The federal government just prints more money. Is, is that unusual? No, we, we, we printed uh, $9 trillion in various forms uh, in nine months through 2018 or through 2020. And that's why we have the inflation today. It, 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 even Mr. Wonderful this morning on Squawk Box says, don't people recognize when you print, he used the number $6.7 trillion, you're going to create inflation. That's, that's elementary. And so these things have to happen. But you need to know, Joe saved our butt on August the 26th. Now, politically, you may or may not agree with that, but also recommend, recognize on October 5th, I did a video and I showed you that Deutsche Bank and Credit Suisse banks are both in jeopardy right now. Their, their, their little tower is starting to fall. It's only a matter of time that these dominoes show us it's going to happen here too. Okay. So what do you do? Here again, I've put this up for the last three, four or five days. These are my shorts, not my shorts, but my shorts. What I'm shorting in the stock market. I'm shorting China. That's a no brainer. Uh, I'm shorting the, the, the financial group. Uh, I'm shorting the S&P and I'm shorting the QQQs. This market is going to, it's going to, it's like Mike Tyson said, you think everything is going well in, in your fight until you get punched in the nose. Well, the punch in the nose is coming. Um, and I think I have seen the, the first signs of it. There, I know Joe promised that he would eliminate student debt, but this is why it happened when it did. Because the bankers showed up and said, we're about to have the same thing that happened in 2009 happen again, and you need to help us, Joe. Okay, that's my excitement for the day, because again, I think I'm in a position to win. Now, the other part of this is, once it happens, and, and, and the, the, the toilet is flushed, big tech is going to take off. Uh, big tech is is arming itself with artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, quantum computing, big data, uh, and then what is going to take off is its medical cure, and that's genome sequencing and genome editing. So I'm currently still about 50% cash. Uh, I'm, I'm dribbling some into my short positions, and that will never be more than 10% of my portfolio. Uh, but I'm preparing for a feast, and that feast is going to happen when this all becomes a reality, and and the and the market just goes, Phew! and that's when I buy in. That's where I made 68 percent on my on my my portfolio in 2020, and all that was I was sitting in cash. Luckily, all for all the wrong reasons, but I was sitting in cash when uh, the coronavirus hit. And, and look at a chart and see how fast that fell. That's what's going to happen here. It isn't, it, it, it isn't a replay of 20, 
2007 through 2010. Because now things happen so much faster. It was like I was telling somebody, the dot-com bubble took a matter of about five years to happen. But we didn't have Google back then. And, and we didn't have the ability to search and understand at this level what is, about, what, what is going to happen. This will happen fast. And then when it's out and over, just like the coronavirus, the, the, the surge up will happen fast. Okay, um, that's my take. That's what I get excited about. Join the tribe. Come meet up with us on Fridays where we'll talk more about this. And, uh, and then go find me on Instagram. My Instagram account went up. I had 5,000 followers yesterday. Today I got 10,000. This sucker's about to explode because there are young people who want an old man's ideas. Talk to you again tomorrow, I hope.